What is up everyone, my name is Ian, otherwise known as Shot, and Ghost of Tsushima's Platinum Trophy healed my soul. Our previous Platinum Trophy was Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3's Platinum, which was ruthless, but this game and its Platinum Trophy was a masterpiece. So the game starts in Act 1. The game opens with the Mongol invasion of Tsushima Island in 1274. You play as Jin Sakai, a samurai under the Sakai clan, who stands alongside the other samurai clans to defend against the Mongols led by Koten Khan at Komoda Beach. In the events of the invasion in the battle of Komoda Beach, they are defeated and Jin is left for dead, the same as the others. And his uncle, Lord Shimura, is captured. Upon the devastating events at the beach and taking a major loss, Jin miraculously survives the attack and is saved by Yuna, a skilled thief. With his first ally on his side, they set out to reclaim his katana and gear. From this point on, and realizing the power and control the Mongols have of the island, Yuna and Jin team up and find numerous allies. These allies are Taka, Yuna's brother who is a skilled blacksmith, Sensei Ishikawa, a master archer, Lady Masako, a noblewoman and warrior who wants vengeance for her family's death at Komoda Beach, and then finally, Jin's childhood friend Ryuzo, accompanied by the Straw Hat Ronin. With a solid group assembled, they embark on their adventure to rescue Lord Shimura, who is held captive by the Khan at Castle Canada. During their efforts to rescue Jin's uncle, things take a turn for the worse, and Ryuzo betrays the group due to a simple offer of food, equipment, and protection from the Khan, leading Ryuzo and Jin to duel before as they did whenever they were kids. In this duel, Jin obliterates Ryuzo, leaving him severely wounded and forced to fall back. After destroying Ryuzo, the group infiltrates the castle and saves Lord Shimura, causing the Mongols to push back to Castle Shimura, where we are now set to continue our journey to take back the castle. So from Act 1 and all the story portions I just mentioned, and while leveling up my character, I earned a fair amount of trophies. I earned a Gathering Storm for getting back my clan Katana. I earned a Point of No Return after breaking the Samurai Code with Yuna. I earned a Moment in Time to mess around with the Photo Mode and take my first ever photo. I earned Open for Business by staggering 50 enemies when fighting. I got Lost and Found from finding my first Pillar of Honor and collecting the Sword Kit. I then got Company of Wolves from recruiting the Straw Hat Ronin. After that, I got Stoke in the Flame from rescuing Taka. I then got Have a Nice Fall for kicking an enemy off the ledge and killing them. From liberating 12 occupied areas in Izuhara, I earned Hero of the People. Then finally, I got a family reunion after rescuing our Uncle Lord Shimra. That's all the trophies I got in this act though, or just this first uh, portion of the game and everything. This moves us to Act 2. So after Act 1, we move to Act 2 and have to help retake Castle Shimra. The first thing we do before anything is reclaim the Clan Sakai armor. Before the story and the beginning of the game, our father Kazumasa Sakai wore the clan armor but was killed in battle, and we refused to aid or help due to fear, which now haunts us. But getting our armor was easy and we could reflect on our past actions with a haiku. Alongside this, we were able to obtain a blowgun from Lady Yuriko due to her experience with plants, pesticides, and poison. Alongside this, we completed some other Act 2 quests that were essential to the story. We first went alongside our uncle to help deliver a message to the Shogun by meeting a pirate named Goro. With the island being surrounded by Mongols and their ship, we had to take over an outpost by the shore and then use a hawacha to take down ships and create an opening for Goro to sail to the mainland and deliver our request for help to the shogun. After destroying all the ships we see how deep our relationship is with our uncle and he then confesses how he wants to adopt us as his son and would only need permission from the shogun. I wish to formally adopt you as my son. From this point on, we then helped recruit and protect the people of Yarakawa. We first helped rescue their archers to help gain their trust. Then we realized that the people of Yarakawa are under siege from the Mongols who are waiting outside the doorstep, ready to attack at any time. They then give their final warning though and attack the next morning. During this attack, we witness how Jin is slowly turning more and more ruthless and we even obtain the ghost stand. And then decapitate a Mongol leader and push further in to destroy their siege weapons to help save the people. With their trust now on our side, we have yet another strong group of warriors to help retake Castle Shimura. But after recruiting them, we get of a major opportunity. This opportunity is to finally kill or catch Ryuzo who betrayed us and sided with the Khan. We were able to reach Ryuzo and kill the Mongols guarding his camp with the assistance of Taka, who in reality should have been heading to the mainland to escape the war with his sister Yuna, but is still stuck on trying to help as much as possible. Upon meeting Ryuzo, we were far too hesitant when encountering him, leading us to get knocked out and captured. Oh. This is where we have our first major encounter with the Khan himself. The Khan has captured Jin and Taka, and he wants Jin to side with him and the Mongols, but after declining, he unties Taka, hands him a sword, and wants him to kill us. Taka, knowing he can't kill Jin, takes the one chance he does have though, and swings on the Khan, but of course misses, leading to his inevitable death and being beheaded. Your friend died for you. 
We then later break free and kill all the Ronin keeping us captive, but we then run into Yuna and we break word of Taka's death. After showing her what happened, we kill all of the Ronin and Mongols sent to attack us and Yuna decides to stay here as she wants to kill the Mongols and take the Khan's head. So with our determination to kill the Khan high, we go full force with taking back Castle Shimra with help from everybody including the Shogun Samurai and charge into Castle Shimra killing any Mongols we see. With the bloodbath that the evasion already is, we continue to see the darker side of Jin again. We are at one point tasked to go ahead of everyone on our uncle's command and everybody watches as we charge forward shooting poison darts into various mongols leading them to cough on their own blood leading them to cough on their own blood and collapse where we then took another mongol leader's head but our uncle is shocked at how far we are striving away from the samurai code of honor and how dark we are becoming but in one conversation we confess to him that it has to be done and we won't let any more of our people die to the mongols and we will do whatever it takes to kill the enemy and drive them away from our home but in return he says there's no honor and slaps us which leads us to sneak out in the night and slip poison into all of the mongols drinks they all choke and die one by one yet again coughing on their own blood alongside this after poisoning the mongols we then went into ryuzo and challenged him to a duel due to his betrayal of us and the people of shushima But not too quickly after, our uncle and the rest of our crew see what we have done, and our uncle tries to persuade us one last time, saying we are his son and that we are samurai, but we decline. After embracing our new identity, we are now held captive by our uncle. But our good friend Kenji breaks us free, and we escape, but have none of our gear or essentials as Yuna took them. While escaping and about to get out of the gates and break free, we are spotted at the stables where our own samurai shoot us and our horse with arrows. No. With our horse being struck by arrows but still riding on, he eventually dies, leaving us to bury him and continue on foot. Continuing on foot, we head to our meeting point that Kenji set for us where Yuna would be. But we quickly realize that it isn't the case and the village is being scorched by the Mongols. And we have no way to defend ourselves, leading us to creep and crawl throughout the tall grass till we have a quick realization that they are doing far more than just burning and killing the people of the village. They are using our own poison against them. But so yeah, they use it on the people. Mongols learn how to make my poison. After a quick realization, we are then hit by our own Ooh. poison. And then are miraculously saved by Yuna. But we now go to Jokaku Temple to rid it of Mongols with our gear yet again to make it our new home for the time being as we are exiled. From this act in this portion of the story, I earned a bunch of trophies as well. The first I earned was Quick Study, which was for learning all four of the stances in the game to fight different enemy types. The next was the Slay Trophy, which was for obtaining 30 pieces of vanity gear. Then we got a Charming Man, which was for equipping charms in all six charm slots. After this, we got Flash of Steel for defeating 20 enemies with a counter attack after doing a perfect parry. We then got a fight for the island, which was for fully liberating Izuhara. After that, I then got good riddance for liberating eight areas in Toyotama. After this, I got the Den of Thieves trophy for discovering Amugi Cove. We then got the Birthright trophy for obtaining our father and our clan's armor. I then got the leader of the people for rallying and recruiting the people of Yarikawa. I then got all in the wrist for defeating the maximum number of enemies in a single standoff. I then got dying embers for avenging Taka and killing the Mongols. After that, the final trophy I got in this act was the ghost for embracing our new identity. So we got those trophies, but now it's time to move on to the final act and portion of the main story. So after escaping captivity, we need to meet up with our previous allies with Yuna to help further create a plan to kill the Khan. The way we plan on doing this is by taking Fort Kamino Dake, which is a large fort held by the Mongols. We get some assistance from a group of archers under their leader Takashi, and then Yuna sends out the word to the rest of the group that she and Jin will be attacking the fort as well. Overall, the attack on the fort was a success, and we were able to take it over fairly easily, but now our task is to plan our attack on the Khan so we can finally kill him. The first thing we do is sneak back into Castle Shimura to propose an offer for our uncle to help us take down the Khan, who is staying at Port Izumi, which is where we go next to scout out the area and determine how we want to approach the port. The main reason the Khan is at the port though is that he wants to utilize the poison we made and take it to the mainland and take it over the same as Tsushima. But overall we come up with the plan to steal some huachas and wait for a snowstorm to roll in to keep the Mongols from sailing away and lock them in at the port and then attack with the use of Lord Shimra and his men hopefully alongside all of those that we have recruited and needless to say the plan worked very well. Our uncle showed up and fought alongside us and we took on the task of killing the Khan while all the other forces fought off the remaining Mongols. So to be honest the Khan boss fight was tricky though whenever you fight the Khan in his first stage or plays he fights like a 
new Mortal Kombat player. He basically just spams the same move over and over. But this allowed us me to learn his moves and play passively, which I did. And I killed him after a good 10 attempts or so. But being wounded and getting a beat down, he of course backs up and has his Mongol puppets try to hold me off. Needless to say, that doesn't work. And we chase after him moving onto his ship. Now this second portion of the fight was the easiest thing in the world. I basically just slaughtered all the puny Mongols and beat the con to death in a corner with the heavenly strike over and over again. But needless to say, we killed him. Yes, I was very satisfying. Things are getting crazy and we take a plunge in the water to avoid the sinking and flames on the ship. Overall, we survive and get to call it a day. After our recent success though, and finally killing the Khan, we get a note from our uncle and he tells us he wants to meet up and discuss our action. He tells us he has to kill us as the Shogun wants the ghost dead due to being seen as an outlaw, disobeying our leaders, and then giving the Mongols a powerful poison, which was unintentional, but doesn't matter. We were then forced to duel our uncle to the death and I beat him on the first shot. From this point on, we are then left with the decision to kill or spare him, and I picked kill. The reason I picked kill is because not only is he annoying, but the honor code would have just led us to failure, but if he wants to live by that, I will at least give him an honorable death as he wishes. I will make sure you are remembered. As a great warrior, a wise leader, and a father. Thank you, my son. Find me in the next life. I will. And although the ending was heartbreaking, I honestly loved every second of this game's story. But here are all the trophies I was able to get from this last act. I first got the gift trophy for collecting 10 gifts from gift altars. I then got the perfect storm for fully upgrading our katana to the max level. Then I got haunting precision for killing 20 enemies with ghost dance. After that, I then got every trick in the book for acquiring all the ghost weapon throwables. After that, I then got witness protection for killing a fleeing terrified enemy with an arrow. After that, I then got the exiled alliance to reunite with our friends. Then got the sovereign end for confronting and killing the Khan. Then finally, I got mono no aware for completing the final mission leaving the past behind and accepting the burden of our new mantle. Overall, this game's story was just incredible and I loved every second of it. But we will still have some trophies to get and obtain before we get the platinum. So let's get into that. So from this point on, we still had a boatload of side quests and collectibles to get and maybe a secret trophy or two. So the first thing or trophy I completed after this was Teller of Tales, which was completing all of the mythical tales for special armor sets and items. For this last one though, we had to do a bunch of duels for the Kenshi armor. They were mostly easy, but we still had some aggravating moments. He's never done that attack before, and I'm quick. That's uh, you can't parry that. I'm I'm convinced you can never just parry. It. You can never. Yes, thank you, God. That was so annoying. After this, I got a good three or four trophies, which were the Securing Sanctuary Trophy, Mass Eviction Trophy, Know Your Enemy Trophy, and the Safe Haven, which was for finding 20 Mongol artifacts and then liberating every part of the island to show all the collectibles and hidden items for our future trophies. 
I then got the Monochrome Masters Trophy for purchasing an item from the white and black dye merchants. So basically after liberating the whole island and clearing out all the outposts and stuff like mentioned before, we can see all the collectibles and they are marked with the question mark on the map. So I got to work on completing collectibles and discovering all the items. The first one I got was the Light the Way Trophy for relighting all the lighthouses in Chushima. After this I got the Cooper Clan Cosplayer Trophy for dressing up as a legendary thief. After this I did the favor of the Kami by finding all the Shinto shrines on the map. Then after getting all the hot springs, haikus, nari shrines, and bamboo strikes, I got the body, mind, and spirit trophy. But then I did the actual side missions for the game, which to be honest, weren't necessarily bad, but they were kind of copy and paste. You just get a bit of background information about the main characters in your group, and then do simple tasks to help them for 9 missions or so. From all these, I enjoyed Norio the warrior monk the most. But the first I did and got out the way was Sensei Ishikawa's, which got me the unbending archer trophy. And from these missions, I got the title Ghost of Tsushima, which got me the Ghost of Legend trophy. As I mentioned before, I enjoyed Norio's side quest, which showed me how Norio, a humble monk, turned to someone very violent and vengeful after seeing the Mongols destroy and steal from his religion and torture and kill his brother. But after completing these, I got the Warrior Monk trophy. After this, I did the Yuna quest, which was the simplest and shortest of them all, which was honestly very relieving. Her quests were much easier and I got the Headstrong Thief trophy. But after I continued with side quests and did some more duels, I got the There Can Only Be One trophy for completing all the duels in the game. But after this trophy, I got the Vengeful Warrior trophy for completing all of Lady Masako's quests, which were easily the most annoying. How is she dying? She's not near them. But after this, I completed all the leftover quests. I had an yes, uni that remained with helping sword hand trophy for completing one. all that tales of Shishima. Then after this, I worked on cleaning up the remaining trophies, which were only so, three or four. The first I got okay. was Avid well Reader for finding so. 20 records. I then got Honor the Unseen for wow. bowing at 10 hidden Easy. altars around the island. Wow. After this, the final and last trophy I did, which required us to play the Lament of the Storm song That's on the okay, flute at Taka's grave. All right, there's that. Let's go in here. We have to do it with the Lament of the Storm. There we go. Dirge of the Fallen Forge. Is that it? That should be it. Living Legend! Let's go! We got it. There's the Platinum. Let's go. Finally. And boom. That was it, guys. Oh we God, Platinum we Ghost it. of Tsushima. That is all I have in this video, though, guys. I hope you all enjoyed. If you want more Platinums and videos like this, don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on post notifications and also join the channel as a member for $3 a month. This allows you to see all my videos, hours, days, and possibly even weeks before anybody else. But that's that. I'll see you guys in the next video.